Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So I had a, a very violent childhood. Um, I, I'm where I am today, I suppose, because um, as a family, I, I think um, we just accepted it. I, I made a, a, a very conscious decision when I was a teenager that I, I would just accept what happened and try and go forward. I, I think that was the key to... To moving moving forward um, was just saying look oh, it happened keep going I think the more you try to disguise what what happened and, and I suppose who you are um, the harder it becomes um, and I and I think um, we did a lot of hiding because um, my father was very violent I think that 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 had a, a huge impact on me because um, even though you were you were telling people and people weren't believing you still you still were kind of hiding at the same time so it made it very very hard to to get help you tried to get help people didn't believe you but then it also was hard to get that help because you always had this constraint of like oh you you couldn't tell anyone uh, so it was a kind of double-edged sword you wanted to tell people but you but you couldn't and then you did and then you felt guilty and it was just like a a continual roll-on effect when I when I got to an age where I could kind of think from it for self and walk away from things, I thought, well, look, just admit it happened, um, keep moving forward. Also had the the added of the crimes that were committed, even against not just against yourself and your other siblings, but it, but against other people. That's right. So that's quite a heavy burden to carry. Yeah. So where are you now on your healing journey? Um, I, I think. Th I think that um, I'm in a good place now. Um, I've got I've got five fantastic kids. I've got a wonderful partner who's very very supportive. My kids are grown up now. They're they're all over eighteen, which is is another like I mean another good thing because I wrote the book many many years ago, and I I never got it published because I thought I was thinking of my kids. I thought, you know, I don't didn't want to impact on them too much. And um, when um, my youngest turned 18, my, my eldest son said, oh, you've got to publish the book now. And I said, oh, you might not want, want me to publish it when you, you know, they knew some of it, but they didn't know everything. And um, But I had a hell of a lot of support from them and from my mother. And um, so we published, well, I say we published because mum was in on everything. And so we, we published the book and, and I found that um, it was really good because they, they all said, oh, we're really proud of you. And I thought, oh, that's great. You know, so that's been a really good thing. It's been a supportive <coughs> and it's been something that's made me stronger because, um, because of this support. Well, I'm 57. You get to the age and you think, my, my life is like three quarters done and you think it, you still have nightmares. You still have... You still have those feelings and you think you're going to have them till you die. You've just got to somehow say, yes, it happens and and then look for something brighter. I mean, it's the thing you think of before you go to sleep at night and the thing when you wake up. It's it's because it's, it's a very traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. But you've got to, just got to be strong and try and say, well, it's not going to destroy me. So what do you think has been the most positive thing you have done for yourself as you've gone down to that? I think being honest with my mother and my mother being honest back was was um, a catalyst. To, we and then it's it's funny, but it's it's the kind of thing that you reach out to people when you you feel the time is right. Um, and I only just got my one of my mother's sisters to read the book. No, they didn't didn't know um, to read it the other day and. And she rang up and she was like, oh, I'm so proud of you. I, I remember this and I remember that. And that it's that validation. It's that um, the whole thing of people saying, this this is a good thing that you've done. And I found that really amazing as well, you know. Because you always get frightened. You think, oh, what are they going to say? What are, once again, the, the, the reaction was positive and it was something that made, she said, I cried the whole way through it. 
it was a healing thing for her too. The, that path is still that the child within us. The healing of that child within us is, the, is really the key. Have the courage to yeah. stand up and tell our stories is really, really, really important. So if somebody else was just beginning to walk down this path of healing, I had an interview with a lady earlier this morning, and she called it, we're not, we don't want to be called the victims. No, that's right. We, we, are, we are survivors, but we don't want to call ourselves survivors. Yeah. I've been saying we are thrivers, you know, that we thrive, and she says we need to be champions. Yeah. Champions yeah. This. I, someone once said to me, and I, um, they, said, they said, you come from the school of hard knocks. And I said, no, I don't. I come from the school of the most fortunate. Basically, you came through it. And um, there are a lot of people that don't come through it, mm -hmm. especially, what, especially what I went through. And, and, I, and I think, you know, not, not for what happened to me, but that, that I'm here now. Um, and, I, and I think that's what I have to remember. And when I was going through it all, I, I thought it was just what happened. Uh, I, did, I didn't think that there was anything amazingly unusual about my life because it was it was something you lived through and by that I mean it was rapid fire um, it was like day to day get through the day survive stay alive and we did and I think you didn't have time to think of oh, what's happening to the person down the road or the you, you didn't do that you just um, stay alive stay, try and be safe try and avoid the predator which was some um, you know you hid <sighs> And um, basically, you lived on adrenaline, I think. So, mm -hmm. but through that, you have come through it. And and I and by saying to myself, um, you are a fortunate person. Um, you've kind of kind of got to look at the thing that from the the perspective that like you did come through it. So, was there any books? Was there counselling? What was the most valuable thing you did as far as things that you reached out for to get help with? Um, there wasn't any counselling, um, and especially where we were, because we went into hiding for quite a while. My mother, um, when we got away, she started to read all those um, 1970s self-help books, like, um, what do you call, uh, a, a, a bit of Jermaine Greer, a bit of, um, a bit of um, our passages, um, you know, those kind of, they're, they're inspirational kind of kind of book so as power of positive thinking um, books probably to make her more assertive and I suppose that there was a brush off effect there because everything she read I read so anything that was left around so I, I would have started to read that but that I must admit those books when I when I was 12 and 13 made me very angry because I probably was an angry child and and for her it was like oh you have to be more assertive or you have to be positive and she'd say all these wonderful things and she was drop dead beautiful my mother um and I always felt like I was the ugly duckling so for me it was, it was quite um it it was quite traumatic um I, I felt like oh how can I live up to these expectations of being assertive or being positive but in the long term I think probably it made me say to myself well this is who I am, you know, accept it and try and just be move on. Because there wasn't the counselling. I probably was a very mixed up, quite traumatised person. When I, when I started work, when I was oh, 15, I started full-time teaching. There was this very older gentleman who was very flamboyant and, and very kind, but I was kind of, I, I, I was, um, I suppose, you're like a prickly person. I don't know what I was. <laughs> He came up to me and he, and he said, what is your problem? And I was like, I don't have a problem, you know, <laughs> being the, the angry young wo woman that I was. And, um, and then I went home and I, I'm very analytical. And so I started thinking, well, do I have a problem? Uh, is this, you know, and then I thought, well, maybe I do have a little bit of a problem because he was like, you know, people try and help you and you never, you never let them in and you never talk to them. And he was quite abrupt with me because I think he was trying to help me and I was just brushing him away, you know, and saying, no, I don't need your help, I'm fine. When I obviously did because I was only 15 and I was in a, a school full of high school boys that somewhat even older than me. So I decided, all right, I'll take 10 steps backwards and 
deep breath and, and I said, all right, you, you can help me with this project I was doing and uh, we became very, very good friends and I suppose in some ways that was that was a counselling thing too because you talk to your friends, don't you? you? He was a lot older, he was some, um, would have been in his 50s and he was someone who would say, well, no, you need to listen to this person or you need to smile when people talk to you or you... You know, and he, he was a very funny person, so you'd be eating your lunch and you'd be laughing and I thought, Oh well, I'm laughing, you know, that was um that was <laughs> That's that a was novelty, it. huh? <laughs> it was novelty because I, I was a very, very um sombre kind of kind mm -hmm. of but unless I was performing and then I was another character and I was um I'd take on that personality. You get do you get what I mean? Because I loved acting. Yes. There was a long period of my time where people would tell jokes and I, did, I could never laugh because I didn't understand what was so funny. And then in the story, the gentleman that befriended you, it's so often that people will say things that make us think and maybe they don't even realize the full impact that they've made on our lives. But it's oftentimes just a few select words that get that, hmm. that wonderful thinking. So tell us about your book. It's to raise awareness that we can heal, that we can... Hmm come to live rich and full lives and to kind of also create an awareness of what's happening in our world, you know, and, and maybe stop this horrible epidemic. Yeah, I, I think that what you're doing is a wonderful thing because um, one of the things that really makes me upset is when I watch the news and I see things on TV that says that say they're like this because of their childhood or they're like this because they, they've had trauma or they and I think, well, you know, you can be like that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing those people. But what I what I am saying is, it doesn't need to be like that. You do not need to to carry on the havoc that you experienced um, and inflicted on other people. You do not need to do that. There's no gratification in that. The gratification is by surrounding your things with yourself with things that you love, people that you love, um, blossoming and and trying to. Um, make the world a better place and, and and having and nurturing you know the things that you really find dear um, that's where you're gonna you're gonna get peace and you're gonna find love and happiness and all those wonderful and things. it's so beautiful one thing that happened for me is not long before my father took his own life mm. and he was the perpetrator he said you've broken the cycle of abuse in our family it was repeat yeah. generation to generation and I did not behave in that manner even yeah. though that I had been a victim. As we move forward, you make choices for yourself, and that's what this is all about: choosing. You must yeah. choose. You must, and you must, and that's that's really wonderful what you just said because it's um it's true. And sometimes you do have to you have to be really critical of yourself. You have to look at yourself and say, well, look, I, I can say there are bits of my father in me, but hopefully, it's the intellect. It's something that tangibly could be good with you. It's not, not the, the evil. The, the, the not the evil. Yeah. yeah. You don't want that. You don't need that. And and if you feel if you feel even feel that you could hurt something, you need to walk away. You know, I, I, I thank God don't feel like that. But I know there might be people that do. And if they, if they feel that they need to stop and, and walk away from that situation immediately and seek help. I've, I've always felt if my book helps one four year old child or one six year old child or, or, or someone who's been traumatized, if it helps them, that's a good thing. You know, and um, it's a worthy cause. It is, it is. And tell us the name of your book. My, my, it's called The Blood on My Hands. And the reason it's called that is it's both literal and, and a metaphor. Um, there was blood on my hands in one of the incidents. And also um, it's just the, the thing that you grow up with, the, the trauma and the guilt, the whole thing of you blame yourself, but then you, and somehow you've got to realise, well, and, and I look at children today and I think, that little child, they're eight. Wow, they're only really little. Yet when you are experience something that, you know, from your past, you you think you're an adult, you know, you're thinking, because you, you're thinking back and you're thinking, no, that's a little child. That that How little are they, you know? They don't have that brain power or that, you know, that adult mind. Yeah. I, I have my grandchildren and I, I take care of one two days a week. And I look at him and I think, well, that was the same age I was. And I can't even fathom a little one 
facing those kind of issues. As we break the cycle and as we we spread our message of healing, we're so grateful that we have not perpetrated the same things just because it was done to us. We didn't carry on the same course, and there is no excuse for that. No, that's right. And the, and the other thing is you, you, you've got to realise, you know, you think back and you think, oh, my goodness, I spent a great deal of my childhood in a cupboard or under a house hiding. And then you think, and when I get very, very upset, even now as an adult, that pull to, to crawl under a bed or to crawl into a cupboard and just sit there and hide is still there. And you've got to say, and you've got to say, stop stop no this is not what you do now you yeah they call them tr triggers i call them yeah. triggers yeah and it's learning to catch those triggers before you allow yourself to go into that you know that's right to be that's watchful right. of what it is that sets those triggers off mm. and also when you're having it you've got to just you got to pull back and, and that's what i'm saying be it's not even being critical it's just that analytical thing that you think oh this is what i'm doing this because you know, if you can say that, like, something upsets you, you get hurt by something, and then you you just, I mean, I, I call it you die inside. You do, because um, um, you get that, that hypersensitivity that you feel that no one else can experience, but I'm sure other people do, you know. But it, it's excruciating, and you just want to protect yourself. And, the, and the, when you get to that thing that you think, oh, I've got to protect myself, it's, it's like you regress right back, and um, that's where you've got to say no. This is something we just work through it and you, and you move on. And like I don't crawl into the cupboard, but I think, oh, gee, that would be nice to just sit in that cupboard in the dark and have no one find me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, so. I'm so happy that you, you took the time to be part of this interview series. The most distressing thing was making it public. I mean, it's absolutely... Um, it's terrifying. Oh, you must feel real. it's cathartic. It's really good. And I think no, no, it's frightening. It's it's scary because you don't know how people are going to react. And, and it's that whole thing of people judge you, and you think, well, you shouldn't care, but you do care. Um, and I think it's like that for so many people. We do because yeah. we're human. Yeah, that's you know, right. it's just who we are. Yeah. No. And then they go, how could this have happened? Well. It did happen, and it happened to not only me. It's, it's happened to lots of people, and um, and you, you don't blame people. You can't blame people um, other than the person, obviously, that was the perpetrator. Because in my case, my mother was was just as damaged in many different ways than than I was. Um, right. like, you know, she was walking around with broken arm, broken jaw, you know, trying to look after four children. There wasn't any government assistance in those days. The laws were different um, and we were isolated. Um, and when you get into that situation, it's, you know, it's hell and how do you get out? And, she and you're, you're simply surviving. Day to day, yep. Yeah. And um, eventually she did get out and that's... Um, got to give her a big tick for that because you know she saved our lives even though she she might have taken her time but oh my, my goodness um it takes a lot of time to get the courage to do that yeah and also um it's what she was young and what and the, the whole thing of having four tiny tiny people you know to look after no money it's um you know we, you don't realize that the the walls that you've got to climb to to get away mm -hmm. you know and and they, they just and I, and I think that oftentimes when we're facing situations like that, we blame we tend to blame ourselves for things that happen because maybe we got angry or when yeah. something happened to us, or maybe we felt like, you know, you could have handled the situation differently that so it wouldn't have provoked this thing. But that's not the case. It's it's just those are the things that we have to personally overcome to have the courage to stand and rise above it. That's right. Well, she, she tried to suicide twice. I know that. Um, so, you know, that was her thinking, I'll get away from this. Um, and then she couldn't go through it because, you know, she had four children and she couldn't actually go through with it. I mean, but I remember when she tried to drive into this post because the, I mean, the brakes went on and the four of us went flying into this because there were no seat belts in those days and we all ended up in heat and from the back seat in the front seat. But she, she stopped the car in time and I can still remember her doing that. That was one experience. Um, and um, and in, as an adult, I think, thank heavens that she didn't go through with it, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
because of what I've got now, you know, um, and where I've come. And so, you, but you can see the trauma she was going through, you know, mm -hmm. as, as a mother. It's beautiful. Well, thank you for this time. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong, and uniting can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal. But the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this we choose to thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also, check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.